Hello, this is Dr. Benjamin Norris from Frostburg State University, and in this video I'm going to talk about the stereochemistry of electrocyclic reactions, but this time as they relate to uh, photochemical conditions. In my immediate previous video I talked about the stereos uh, our stereospecificity, the diostereospecificity of these reactions under thermal conditions. And in this video, I'm going to change to talking about photochemical conditions. Because interestingly enough, under photochemical conditions, the diastereoselectivity of these reactions changes. And, what the, out and the outcomes switch from thermal to photochemical. And the combination that used to give the sin kind of product now gives the anti, and the, and the orientation that used to give anti now gives sin. And the reasoning for that we can find in examining the uh, molecular orbitals in the reactants. And we'll do the 6 carbon version and the 4 carbon version here. So the first thing we need to look at, uh, or remember, that using a molecular orbital picture here, the molecular orbitals, the atoms rotate so that the orbitals can have constructive overlap. And when we were looking at the thermal version, we were looking at an orbital picture that looked like this, using the HOMO of 135 hexatriene. But once you irradiate 135 hexatriene with UV light in the appropriate wavelength, this is no longer the HOMO. Something happens. And so let's talk about what happens here. Once you have irradiated 135 hexatriene, you have a different HOMO. The molecule is no longer in the ground state, it's in the excited state. And in the excited state, we now have electrons in the next orbital up, what used to be the, uh, what used to be the LUMO in the ground state. And now we have a completely different uh, arrangement. We have a different orbital, a different molecular orbital that we're working with. And so the requirements for the atoms to rotate so the orbitals can rotate to form constructive overlap are different. And to make this picture clearer, I'm going to eliminate uh, the orbital lobes everywhere but at the two ends. We're going to put in our methyl groups, which I guess in this case are pointing inward. You know what? They're going to run into each other. Let me do it pointing outward. There we go. Right. And in this case, for the high, for the orbital lobes to come in contact or to, to have a uh, constructive overlap, we need to have con rotary action. And this is different. In, than in the thermal case. In the thermal case, we had disrotatory action. And we ended up with a product uh, that came from one atom rotating clockwise and the other atom rotating counterclockwise. Well, that's not going to happen here. Once this rotation has happened, one of our atoms is rotating clockwise, the other one is rotating also clockwise. Or they could both rotate counterclockwise, I suppose. And in fact, if we get the other rotation, you'd get the other enantiomer. I want to move my methyl group up out of here. And we get conrotary get conrotary motion in the photochemical state for the six electron system. All right. Now, 
if we were to switch the orientation, so let's put a, put the methyl group here, make this a hydrogen. Now both methyl groups would be rotating in the same direction, in this case down, and we would get the syn product. So when we're in photochemical, uh, when we're doing UV irradiation of a photochemically activated reaction, the homo orbital comes from the excited state, and we get opposite rotation motion than we would have got in the thermal version. So six electrons is disrotary in, in thermal, conrotary in the photochemical version. And you know what? We can probably expect the same thing for the four electron uh, system. So let's do it. Here is the LUMO, uh, or I'm sorry, here is the HOMO of 1,3-butadiene. And when you irradiate this with UV light, we're exciting an electron from the ground state. We're exciting the molecule from the ground state to the excited state. And we have an electron in what used to be the LUMO of the ground state, but is now the HOMO of the excited state. And that means the orbitals that we are working with look like these. And depending on how, let's see, I actually think I want to have my, do my methyl groups pointing outward so that they're not bumping into each other. But now we get to get, um, let's see, here we go. To get the type of constructive overlap that we need, we get disrotatory motion, which means we get different stereochemical outcomes. And so I have to go up here and fix my structures, which I copied and pasted from the previous video. And we get... From the therm or from the photochemical version, different diastereoselectivity. So, in the case here, we get syn when the two methyl groups are pointed to the outside or to the inside. And if we had the the case where the two methyl groups were pointed in the same, or pointed one outside, one inside. Then one methyl group would rotate down and the other methyl group would rotate up. Uh, or if we got uh, rotation in the other disrotatory fashion, we'd get the other enantiomer. And to summarize this up, right, under photochemical conditions, if we have four n electrons, like we do in the or in the butadiene case, we get disrotatory motion. And if we have four n plus two electrons, we get conrotatory motion. And this is opposite for the behavior that we experience with uh, thermal conditions. I'm going to have one more video on uh, electrocyclic reactions where we'll summarize this molecular orbital behavior, which are collectively known as the Woodward-Hoffman rules, and do some examples. Thank you for watching.